Greetings, my friendly fans of Fright. It is I, Ghoulie Herb, back with more terrific trivia for the entire family. Last time, we went back to the 1980s and looked at the gory greats that gave you goosebumps. Today, we're going to talk about, well, who knows? Not even the shadow until I spin our wicked wheel. It's a weird wheel. It's a wicked wheel with a real wheel. Please come out now. Whoa! Ah, there it is. Now let me spin this sucker so we can let the scarifying begin. Whoa! Look, it's the fearsome 50s, a decade of gimmicks, gigantic creatures, and Cold War warnings. A decade that saw the drive-in come of age. Shockers beginning to be imported from overseas, and Vincent Price becoming one of the most sinister stalwarts in shocking thrillers. Speaking of Vinny, the price was just right for a big hit in 1953's House of Wax. He plays a mad, mad, mad sculptor with a penchant for turning real dead bodies into wax sculptures. The idea was disturbing, but when theaters presented it in 3D, it was even scarier. The director of this remake of 1933's Mystery of the Wax Museum was André Dita, who only had one eye. The film also featured actor Charles Buczynski as Igor. Yes, later you would know him as Charles Bronson. And it was such a hit that Price appeared as kooky trick expert Galileo the Great in the similar 3D effort The Man Magician just one year later. Of course, later in the decade, Vincent appeared in two all-time classics, both in the same year, 1959, for William Castle. The House on Haunted Hill, and The Tingler. Did you know that the real location used for The House on Haunted Hill was designed by none other than renowned architect Frank Lloyd Wright? Or that The Tingler featured the first scene of LSD taking on the big screen? Also, both movies offered gimmicks to scare the pants off the audience members. For Haunted Hill, a merger was utilized. A pretty fancy schmancy name for a skeleton <laughs> on a clothesline. And for the tingler, Percepto was placed in theater seats, buzzing patrons, whenever the worm-like creature appeared. Speaking of creatures, 1951's The Thing from Another World, produced by Howard Hawks, offered a largely unseen creature who terrorized a remote Arctic military base. The scares were in the suggestion, and when we finally see the alien organism, it resembles a hulkish, bald carrot. At least that's what James Arness thought he looked like in the makeup. In the film, the thing is frozen in ice, attacked by dogs, hacked by axes, and electrocuted, which may have made getting insurance for the future Marshal Matt Dillon very difficult to get. Invaders of a different sort were found in two classic sci-fi horror projects of the era. Invaders from Mars and Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Both films' intergalactic terrors infiltrate all American neighborhoods, taking over their inhabitants' minds, turning them into people devoid of personalities. In Invaders, the culprits were Martians, and in Body Snatchers, they were pods from outer space. Both movies were shot on small budgets. Invaders from Mars was designed as a 3D film, but there wasn't the scratch to make the aliens pop. And only $15,000 of Body Snatchers' low $420,000 budget was used on special effects. Pretty amazing, wouldn't you say? A different sort of creature was born in 1954 in Japan. Its name was Gojira. And when it finally hit American shores in 1956, it was renamed Godzilla, King of the Monsters. And it featured American actor Raymond Burr playing an American reporter in a wraparound story filmed separately and mixed into the original footage. Godzilla was a mutant born out of nuclear testing who got all medieval on Tokyo. The dinosaur-like critter was so popular, 
It spawned countless spinoffs and sequels. None of these featured Burr, whose name in the movie can't help but provide a chilly chuckle today because his character was called Steve Martin. Japan, however, was not the only country pumping out large monster movies. Here in the good old USA, the Cold War and the possibility of nuclear annihilation was in the air. Hence, the really fearsome 1950s were quite the creature palooza, boasting radiation spawn critters like the ample ants called them, big super spiders and tarantula, and mighty mollusks of the monster that challenged the world. Plus, an honorary octopus in It Came From Beneath the Sea, and a really fast big bird in The Giant Claw. Ah, the good old days. Big ants, monstrous mollusks, terrifying tarantulas. Could you believe this stuff used to be called scary during the 1950s? <laughs>